Hi, everyone, and welcome to this month's Gifting Back to the Community Free Health Education Series, Eating for the Season, the Spring Edition. I'm so excited that you've chosen to sign up for this masterclass, and I can't wait to get to know each of you as we discuss the benefits of seasonal eating. I want, all, I want all of you to know that I will be sharing questions along this masterclass today, so feel free to share your answers in the chat box. Did you know that gut health equals brain health? Did you know that in the last 10 years, heart disease has actually declined by 7%, but Alzheimer's disease has increased by 145%? I realized that I was a dementia candidate and I was at high risk. And I decided to minimize that risk and turn that around because Alzheimer's disease stole both of my parents from me. I have combined my 16 years worth of research with holistic nutrition and being a brain health professional to become an expert in the gut brain health connection. And now I help midlifers who are suffering and often many times painful digestive issues, heartburn, bloating, unpredictable bowels, leading to brain fog and early sign of memory loss. Over 80% of my clients who complete my program become symptom-free without the use of medications and reduce their likelihood of developing even more serious issues. This is why I am so passionate about what I do. Let's change those stats. Age with all of our memories, remember our loved ones and stay independent. And with that, let's get started. What is seasonal food? A peach that's so ripe that it runs down to your elbow. A crisp ass apple, right? That's perfectly balanced between that sweet and tart. The smell of citrus permeating through the air when you're peeling back that clementine skin. And that width of earthy, sweet pumpkin smell when you're carving that Halloween jack-o'-lantern. Seasonal food is produce that is purchased and consumed around the time that it has been harvested, which means that it's absolutely at its peak in terms of flavor and most importantly, nutritional value. Eating seasonally is hardly a new trend. It's something humans have been doing throughout history until the very recent past when transportation allows us to get that bulk shipment of food from distant countries. There are tons of benefits of getting seasonal eating foods, right? Which we'll be discussing during this masterclass. But first I want to know how closely you follow seasonal produce in your diet. How often do you buy fruits and vegetables that are out of season? You can type your answers in the chat. Have you ever had a tomato fresh off the vine? You can practically taste the sunshine and the earth just bursting from it. Now, <laughs> think about that grocery store tomato watery, a little grainy, not nearly as delicious. Let's face it, it's downright bland. Why? Because when those tomatoes were grown out of season, they had to travel really far to even get to us, which means that they were picked when they were green and they don't get the chance to actually develop their proper flavor or nutritional value. When food is grown close 
by and it doesn't have to travel across the ocean to get to you, there's the freshness, there's the flavor, there's the nutritional content. They're all preserved. What is your favorite fruit and vegetable or vegetable to eat right off the tree, the bush, the vine in the springtime? For me, I really love springtime peas. And when you pop open that pod and you eat the pea, oh my gosh, it's as sweet as a piece of candy. Back in the day, choices and produce selection at the grocery store were so much slimmer than they are today, right? You only had seasonal options available to you. If you are really serious about making a move to include more seasonal produce in your diet, then, you know, tap into those old recipe books or ask your family for recipes that they grew up eating. And I know there's got to be some really good ones just floating around in our own, you know, social circles that we could ask for. If you're not sure about an item, then turn on the internet and try out different cuisines, right? Try them in a different way. Take cabbage, for example, super inexpensive, right? Such a versatile food. You can make anything from coleslaw to dumplings to sauerkraut to kimchi with that cabbage, so easy to use. How about cost saving, right? There is a cost saving aspect to eating locally grown food when, you know, and it really comes down to a matter of supply or demand. When you buy produce that's in season, you're buying it at its peak of its supply, when it's the easiest to grow and the easiest to harvest. When there's a lot of fruit and vegetables readily available, we see those prices really come down. But when they're harder to grow and they're harder to harvest, then we see those prices go up. Have you observed the produce prices in your grocery store? I'm sure you have. I'm sure you've seen those swings of, you know, what does a springtime strawberry cost versus a wintertime strawberry? Buying local food supports our economy and your community. When you give your money to local farmers and businesses, it gets reinvested into local businesses, which creates more jobs and more services. Plus, locally grown food doesn't have to travel as far because it's processed and distributed right here nearby. No more pineapples that are being flown in from Mexico in the middle of October. Instead, you'll be eating strawberries, right? That are grown 20 miles down the road. Less time from the farm to table means fewer greenhouse gases and smaller overall carbon footprint. And that's really great for the world, right? Finally, buying locally grown produce creates, you know, more of a community connection. Instead of working through long chains of distributions and buyers actually get to meet the people who are growing their food, which helps to build more vibrant community that's passionate about providing healthy and safe foods for our families. How often do you buy local produce? Do you have access to local produce in your community? I know here locally for us, we do have a farmer's market and in the winter months, it's always available the second Saturday of the month, but coming up soon in May, they'll be going to every single week. And I do take the effort to go over there. Oh my gosh, the produce is amazing. You can taste the nutritional value. Nothing is so drastically different between a grocery store carrot and buying a farm-raised carrot. I mean, the flavor profiles are drastically different, which means that the nutritional value is also drastically different, right? 
if spring has sprung, these fruits and veggies are already hitting the shelves at lower prices in temperate environments. So here's a really great list for what's available in springtime for fruits. So be on the lookout for these so you get your best value. Apricots, avocados, cherries, grapefruit, kiwis, kumquats, lemons, mangoes, navel oranges, pineapple, strawberries. Which of these fruits are your favorite? Are there any that you haven't tried or maybe you're curious about? I'll share that I personally love kumquats. I love when I see that they're in season and I like to slice them and add them to my vegetables that I'm going to be roasting. And so you just eat the skin and all. Oh my gosh, it is so good. And don't worry about trying to memorize this list. I'm going to send this list to all of you via email. Grab those veggies at the springtime farmer's market. So what can we see available as far as vegetables? Artichokes. And just so you know, today is March 16th, and it is actually National Artichoke Day. How about that? Arugula, asparagus, beets, carrots, fava beans, fennel, fiddleheads, leeks, lettuce, morels, nettles, spring onions, parsley, peas, radishes, rhubarb, scallions, spinach, Swiss chard, turnips, watercress. Whew, we have a lot to choose from. Which of these veggies do you like? And how do you prepare them? Are there any that you haven't tried? Think outside the box, okay? And use those excess veggies to make like light soups or throw them into smoothies. You know, when in doubt, you can always make a stir fry with vegetables or a coconut curry with some coconut milk. Super easy to do, so yummy. And everyone, I will email you the list of vegetables that are available now uh, for springtime as well. Bountiful berries call for preserves. And I love to make my own preserves because I can control the amount of sugar or what I choose as a sweetener when I make it myself. Um, and we will be getting into that just a tad bit. Uh, taking advantage of bulk sales you know, to stir up jams or jellies or sauces. You can also store them in airtight containers and toss them into the deep freezer for later use for, you know, your smoothies or to top hot cereal in the winter months. I love to do that. And I want to give everybody a pro tip here. Wash your berries and your fruit. And if it's a larger fruit, then go ahead and, you know, dice it up, right? Have it processed into the portion size that you would like. And then allow that to dry and take a sheet pan, place a piece of parchment paper on there and put your fruit or your berries onto that and then place that into the freezer uncovered. Once that is frozen, then move that fruit into freezer bags and then store that in the freezer. And the reason why is because now all that fruit will be individual. So it makes it so easy to portion it out in the future where you're gonna use it. What's your favorite fruit or berry to enjoy during the spring months? I personally love strawberries and I'm so happy to see that, they're in, that they'll be coming into season, you know, here very soon. Herbs, oh, I love herbs are easy to grow and they're bountiful once the soil starts to warm up from the winter months. So take advantage of those fresh pops of flavor and harvest them for rest of the year. Pick your favorite herbs and try one of these techniques. Um, this is something that I use, oh my gosh, they're so e this is so easy to do. I really wanna give you some tips here. Finely chop and fold 
that fold those herbs into softened non-dairy butter. And you can freeze that non-dairy butter for later and throw it into your fridge um, for use later, right? If you want, you can, uh, you can freeze it or put it in the fridge and use it now. Moving on. Submerge in warm olive oil that take, submerge those oils into really warm olive oil and then keep it in a bottle. And that flavored oil, you can use that to top veggies or salads. You can mince your herbs and store them in an airtight container in the freezer and then sprinkle them on top of a hot meal for a pop of color, or they're also awesome antioxidants. And it's a great way to especially use like extra parsley that you might have. Um, whipping up things like pesto or chimichurri or any other type of herb-based sauce and store it in jars. Or you can also freeze it in ice cube tray. And what I like to do is freeze it in the ice cube tray and then pop those out and then put those into a freezer bag. And just to let you know, one ice cube of herbs is about one tablespoon of fresh herb, just so you know, like for recipe purposes. Um, you can take your herbs from the garden, you can hang them and allow them to dry so that you can make your own herbal tea blends um, or even just herb blends that you use for cooking. What's your favorite herb to collect from the garden? And how do you use it? I love holy basil. And I use it in my summertime tea along with hibiscus. You know, do as our ancestors did, right? And preserve those seasonal foods by pickling or canning them. Beans, cucumbers, peppers, or carrots, pickle them. You know, tons of tomatoes, stir up, you know, some tomato sauce that'll last you all the way through the winter. While canning isn't totally foolproof and it takes a little bit of practice, it's not super hard um, and it's very inexpensive and you can, it's a really great activity to do with someone else like family or friends. When it comes to pickling, nothing is, nothing is more complicated than this. Dropping in some vegetables and some vinegar and seasoning and toss it into the fridge, right? That's super easy way. Um, have you ever canned or pickled anything? In our house, uh, we do a lot of fermenting. Um, it's very easy to do. And as an added bonus, you know, it's a probiotic as well. When fruits and vegetables are forced to grow outside their natural seasoning seasons, you know, farmers, oh my gosh, they've got to use all kinds of chemicals and unnatural methods to ensure that out of season harvest meets our cosmetic standards that we expect to see in our produce department at the grocery store. Large markets and grocers may buy out of season produce that's been gassed, right? That's a big one treated with radiation, we see that a lot, and preserved with wax, right, to extend the shelf life and to save money for them. And personally, I think that's kind of gross. Um, additionally, overseas agriculture may not regulate their soil contamination the same way that our country does. And some agricultural areas have super high levels of metal and other toxins in their soil that seep into the produce. So that's something for us to be really mindful of. If you're trying to keep your meals as clean as possible and free of additional pesticides and chemicals, shop locally and eat in season. Community Supported Agriculture or CSA is an investment that you make, right, in a local farm or a collection of regional farms that you're paying um, bulk for the harvest, right? So this is where you actually 
pay an annual payment as a share. And then throughout the harvest time, you will receive weekly boxes or locally harvest fruits and vegetables. While the upfront cost of CSA, you know, can seem a little bit overpriced, it has actually been proven to be a money saver. And most people who join a CSA end up saving about an average of $75 a year. Um, and if you're really kind of still a little bit unsure about that upfront cost to join a CSA, you may want to kind of consider, you know, maybe sharing that cost with like a neighbor or a roommate or a loved one. Um, some farms actually offer half shares or a sliding scale as well. I have a link that I'm going to share with all of you, and I'll send that out to an email for everyone um, that actually gives you ways to find CSA groups in your region. And I will let you know, as far as locally where we live, there are quite a few farmers um, that we can choose from. And this is a really big one for me, more nutrients. Produce that has been picked when it's naturally harvest is always, 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 always gonna be higher in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, folate, beta carotenes. Locally in season source fruits and vegetables will also appear brighter and more vibrant in your store than their limp, dried out counterparts that you know have traveled so far just to get to you. Plus, you know, nature really it kind of supplies us with what we need, right? So in the winter time, when that citrus fruit is ready to be harvested, it's just in time for the cold and flu season. Or summer fruits like peaches and apricots that provide us with all that extra beta carotene really helps protect us from sun damage. Every dollar you spend is a vote on how the world operates. And never forget that. Your dollar, how you spend your dollar is, oh my gosh, so valuable. We can change the world just by how we spend. You know, I think this is such an important piece. And as a food buyer, the produce that you choose to buy plays, you know, a role, right? And even in your local grocery store and, and how they operate. Think about it. If you are continuously buying fresh raspberries in the middle of December, your grocery store takes those purchases into account and will keep, you know, keep supplying that, right? Because the demand is there. Um, so, you know, when you go to the grocery store and buy produce, what are your staples? You know, do you have any fruits or vegetables that you buy year round? Uh, I'm going to say I'm guilty of doing this as well. You know, I definitely buy things that I know are not in season. And I just want to thank everyone um, for sticking with me through the masterclass today. And I hope you've all learned something about the importance of seasonal eating and I'm curious uh, if you're going to be willing to try any new fruits or vegetables. Um, please take a moment to share with the group the number one key takeaway from this experience for you was in the chat. And thank you everyone for your interest in today's masterclass. It was really great fun. And just like I said, I will take the CSA part and definitely email that out to everyone and also the list of fruits and vegetables that are currently in season for spring. So you'll get that, be on the lookout for that coming from me. Um, email should be out uh, either later today or tomorrow. So just be on the lookout for that. And if you feel like you need support right now with your health journey, um, do not hesitate to ask for help. And if you know someone that does, um, I'd love to offer you a free health strategy session as my gift to you. And we can carve out 30 to 60 minutes so I can get, you know, learn a little bit more about what's going on with you and what kind of support you may need to get the results that you're looking for. And if you can easily go to our website and book that appointment, that health strategy session, 
um, and let's get you feeling amazing. And what's coming up for our gifting back to our community health series? Starting in March, right after this one, um, after this masterclass, be on the lookout for an email series on tending to the anxious mind. Uh, with everything that's just going on in our world right now, I really felt like working a little bit on, you know, people feeling anxious was definitely needed. So please sign up for that. There's some really good tips in there. And in mid-April, uh, we will be releasing another email series, Going Gluten-Free. And I'm running this email series right before this announcement, which is starting April 21st, is my first Facebook group challenge of the year, which is Going Gluten-Free. So you're kind of getting two supports there, the email first and then the email series first, and then we'll actually be meeting as a group in Facebook in my challenge, private Facebook challenge group. And we will be supporting each other going gluten-free if that's something that you're interested in. Um, you'll get an invite to enjoy, to join that group and feel free to share that with others. If you think anyone else, you know, might get some benefit from that. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all in that group. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and health and happiness to you.